Injustice is a world-famous video game and a world-famous comic book, and it's gone on for over eight years, telling the story of Injustice 1, 2, and 3. Today, we're going to be bringing you the Injustice Year 1 storyline, which kicks off this entire adventure. Our story begins on a rooftop no different than any other. But on this rooftop, Batman and Superman, two of the greatest friends in superhero history, are sitting. Superman looks at Batman and tells him, we want you to be the Godfather. Bruce looks surprised, and Clark smiles. Hey look, the world's greatest detective is surprised, and Bruce smiles. You see, in this universe, Superman is married to Lois Lane. Gotham is relatively calm, and the superheroes are revered among the people. They are the heroes of this world, and no one questions that. This is a perfect world that the Joker is about to ruin as he shoots and kills Jimmy Olsen and kidnaps Lois Lane. Things ramp up quickly because Superman can't find her, and panicked, he grabs Batman by the shoulders. Please, help me find her! So Batman calls up the entire Justice League. This is an all-points bulletin. We need everyone to look for Lois Lane. The Flash arrives instantly in Metropolis, and Batman has him run throughout the entire city looking. While he doesn't find Lois, he finds something that Batman needs to see. He carries Batman to Star Labs, where they find the Scarecrow dead from Joker's Toxin. Wonder Woman then calls up Batman to let him know that they got a lead. The Joker is apparently in a submarine beneath Metropolis, and that's why no one can find him. So Superman flies over the bay and he finds the submarine, and he tears it open with his bare hands. Inside, he finds Lois being operated on by the Joker and Harley Quinn. But before Superman can stop them, the Joker hits him with fear toxin. And when he looks up, he sees Doomsday. He has no idea what's going on, but he doesn't have any time to fight with Doomsday, so he grabs him and he rockets top speed straight up into the atmosphere while the Joker is watching. Both the Joker and Harley Quinn jump out of the submarine and they begin to leave, with Harley saying goodbye to the first submarine that she's ever owned and named. Goodbye, Gunter! Gunter is a terrible name for a submarine, Hal tells them as he arrives. What did you do, Joker? Batman demands to know. Simple! I put a warhead in Metropolis, and I wired the detonator to Miss Lane's heartbeat. Once it stops, the bomb will go BOOM! Why would her heart stop? Batman then thinks about it, and he puts it together. The fear toxin was mixed in with kryptonite so that it could get into Superman's bloodstream. Superman! Stop what you're doing! Whatever you are seeing is not real! Joker leans in. Did you know that she was pregnant, Bats? It's Lois, Superman! The gas finally begins to wear off, and Superman realizes exactly what he's done, and he looks in horror, with tears welling up in his eyes, at Lois drifting off into space. But with her death also comes the detonation of a nuclear warhead in Metropolis. The Justice League goes into crisis mode, saving as many people as they can from the fallout, while Batman brings the Joker to the police station. Superman is locked in grief, though, as he holds Lois. He can't believe what he's been forced to do. He hands the body of Lois to Wonder Woman. Can you hold them for me? Keep them safe. I'll be back. He then takes off at top speed, with Wonder Woman questioning, where's he going? In flight, the Green Lantern gets in his path. Superman, where is he? The Joker, where did Batman take him? Batman took him to Gotham Prison, as Superman continues on. At Gotham Prison, Batman is trying to interrogate the Joker, when suddenly the wall is torn out and Superman walks in, throwing the table to the side, and then he puts his hand through Joker's chest! Superman retreated to the Fortress of Solitude following the events where he tried to grieve to the best of his ability. But he can't do it. All around him, the news is telling him about the disasters happening in the world. No more, he says to himself, and he takes off. There's a war happening in the Middle East that he doesn't think needs to happen any longer, and after getting in the way of the incoming rockets, he tells the people, He's gonna stop this. He walks right into the presidential palace and he grabs the president by his shirt. And then he carries him down to the people that he has been killing and he strips him down to his underwear. Wonder Woman lands and sees what he's doing. There are cameras here, Superman. I know, and I have something to say. Don't do it here, looking like this, she tells him, implying his tired and rough look. Let me call a press conference for you. And it happens at the United Nations. With Wonder Woman behind him, Superman tells the world, My name is Clark Kent, and I was a reporter for the Daily Planet. And I am tired of all of these hostilities and all of this fighting. I don't care about your land or your beliefs, and I don't care if you're a madman or a terrorist, a king or a president. You have no right to take innocent lives. 
I am calling a worldwide ceasefire, and if you don't, I will stop you. It's over. Things ramp up quickly once again with people challenging Superman and him blowing up their missiles and preventing anything. So the US government decides to make its largest mistake that they have ever made. And they kidnap Clark Kent's parents, and they have Mirror Master throw them into the Mirror World. Superman arrives to a burning house that was once his childhood home, and he gets a warning from Mirror Master. Stop what you're doing, or we will kill your parents. I have them in a place that not even you can get to. Now go back to fighting giant space robots or something. Most of the Justice League goes to the Watchtower to discuss these events, and Wonder Woman tells them, We've all been affected by last week's tragedy, but Superman is trying to make the entire world a better place. But someone in this world is trying to tell us what our place is by kidnapping Superman's parents. I am Princess Diana, and I know my place. Will you stand with us? The Justice League thinks about it, and Cyborg steps forward. Superman has saved this world ten times over. I'll stand with you. So they all move fast, teleporting around the Earth, searching for Superman's parents, and it doesn't take long to find Mirror Master himself and get him to talk. While they're all assisting Superman, Batman figures out who is behind this entire plot, and he breaks into the White House to have a chat with the President. Your plan failed, Mr. President, and it failed in a way that will strengthen them. It will unite them all behind him. And the President looks at Batman. You said them, not us. Things once again ramp up as the Justice League travels around the world trying to stop all war, everywhere that they can. And eventually, Superman realizes that Batman isn't helping him, so he decides to pay a visit to the Batcave. Once he arrives, Damien takes time to thank Superman for getting rid of the Joker, and Nightwing asks if he's okay. But Superman smiles, and he walks to the Batcomputer. My parents are taken, Bruce. Where were you? I was doing what needed to be done. My parents! You of all people! You have to stop what you're doing. I have to stop? Stop saving lives? Stop bringing dictators to justice? You're scaring them. And Superman rips Batman's mask off of his face. Good! They should be scared. Too scared to press the button. Too scared to pull the trigger. You taught me that. You would do the exact same thing if you were me. You killed a man, Clark. Every time that you let that madman live, how many more people did you condemn? Did you even feel guilty? Every time. But we don't get to choose who dies. One death! One death to save millions! Meanwhile, the Justice League is getting started in a war against Atlantis. It started as a disagreement between Wonder Woman and Aquaman, but it doesn't matter now as people are fighting. Back in the Batcave, though, their argument is heating up. Why did you let him do this to me, Bruce? You can't possibly understand what he took. He stole the life that Lois and I would have had together. I would have loved that child more than anything. I already did. And look at you, sitting in the dark ignoring Damien and Dick. How many friends did they have in Metropolis? Have you even consoled them? Held them? What's your excuse for not being a father? But Batman has had enough, and he throws a punch at Superman, completely unfazing him. At that moment, the alarms in the Batcave begin to go off as the battle with Atlantis starts raging on, and Superman turns to Batman. Bruce, come with me. And they look at each other, and Bruce lowers his head. I can't, Clark. I'm sorry. Meanwhile, off in the middle of the ocean, Aquaman has called upon his ultimate weapon, the Kraken, to battle against the Justice League. But Superman arrives, injuring the Kraken and grabbing Aquaman by the throat. Stop this now. I called for a ceasefire. Even your voice doesn't reach down into the deep, Superman. The sea is mine alone to command. Around the world, the Atlanteans begin to rise from the oceans to invade various parts of it. Consider this a show of strength, Superman. Now get the hell out of my ocean. But Superman isn't listening to this ultimatum. And he takes all of the strongest in the Justice League and they fly underneath Atlantis so that they can tear it out of the ground. They lift the entire city out of the ocean and they carry it to the Sahara Desert. Aquaman decides that he can't fight against Superman and he submits. And as he retreats back into the ocean, he relays a message through Wonder Woman. I've ruled peacefully for years. When Superman is ready for my advice, tell him I am here for him. And Diana, I'm sorry about Lois. But Wonder Woman doesn't relay that message. Superman's reign continues to grow, and after putting down a superpowered individual that thought he could stand up to Superman, upsetting the Flash, and making the Flash rethink this entire course of actions, and then preventing Two-Face from killing a news reporter, Superman has made his next decision. Live on the air, 
he informs the world that the twisted individuals of Gotham City deserve nothing. The people of Gotham deserve to know that those deranged individuals can never threaten them again. My god, they're gonna go after Arkham, Nightwing exclaims as he runs to the Batmobile with Batman. But Damien stands there. So what? Have you even considered for a second that maybe you are wrong? And on that note, Nightwing and Batman leave Damien there because there isn't any time to waste. As Superman and the Justice League arrive at Arkham, there stands Batman and Nightwing ready to stop them. But the shocker is that Damien is now standing with Superman and his side. What are you doing, Robin? Nightwing asks him. What am I doing? I'm bringing criminals to justice. I'm standing with Superman and Cyborg and Wonder Woman, and you're standing with Killer Croc. The Justice League begins to open the doors to the cells, and the Flash shows up, picking up the criminals and carrying them away instantly. So Batman activates a virus in Cyborg, forcing him to the ground in pain. The Justice League looks at Batman. What did you do? What the hell is wrong with you? Okay, that's enough, Nightwing says as he turns off Batman's gadget. Everyone just calm down. We don't want to look bad in front of the psychopaths. But that's when things get worse, because right at that moment, Green Arrow was dropping off Harley Quinn, and then he left her with one of the random guards there. Well, that didn't go well as she's now opening up every cell door. All hell begins to break loose as villains go free, and Grundy breaks up from the floor below, grabbing Robin by the head and then carrying him off into the basement. Superman dives into the basement and begins to dismantle the undead monster that is Grundy, while Nightwing works his hardest to get Robin out of the monster's grip. Batman then leaps down with them and onto Grundy, at that point blowing up Grundy's head. Superman looks at Batman. Good job. They all get back up to the top floor in the main fight, and Robin loses control. I'm sick of all of you! Why do you think you deserve help after all you've done, he yells, as he clubs Riddler across the jaw. Robin, that's enough, Nightwing yells. Stop telling me what to do, Damien says as he throws his baton at Nightwing. It was just a child's rage and nothing more. He's done it so many times to Nightwing before and he's caught it. But this one time, Nightwing wasn't ready for it and it hit him in the head, throwing him off his balance. Nightwing fell over and he landed on a rock, cracking his neck. Just like that, it was over. Damien looked at the man that he treated as his brother and he realized what had happened. Batman came out of the hole in the ground and he was with Superman. And he looks over to see Nightwing on the ground. I'm, I'm sorry. Damien tries to say through tears, but Bruce couldn't hear it. What did you do? He screams as he puts his hands on his head in shock and disbelief. I didn't, I didn't mean to. Damien tried to say, but Bruce pushed him away. Get off of him. Everyone in Arkham stopped their fighting as Bruce picked up Nightwing and he carried him out of the building. This is only the beginning though, because so many more heroes and villains will perish in this conflict. Batman grieved, and then he enacted his own plan, to build a group of superheroes that are willing to stand against Superman. He would build his own fighting force, his own team, to stop his former friend. This story takes place during the events of Issue 1, Year 1. Superboy was flying through Metropolis with Gar, Beast Boy, in his arms, as they were off to get the Titans some meatball subs from the best place ever. Kid Flash is running ahead of them, trying to beat them to the spot, but both Superboy and Gar decided that they would beat him. Superboy drops Gar, and Gar changes into a bird, while Superboy hits top speed. But that's when they see it. The nuclear explosion set off by the Joker. Kid Flash is running so fast that he was taken out right away without even any time to react. And seeing that explosion coming, Superboy tried to grab Gar. He tried to save his friend. He really did. He tried to shield him from the blast. But in the aftermath, we saw Superboy on his knees holding Gar in his arms. The rest of the Titans saw the news and Starfire crashed through the windows getting to Metropolis at top speed where she and the rest of the Titans saw the aftermath. Superboy holding their dear friend. And he explained that Bart was taken by the blast. They all went back to the Titans Tower where they sat around listening to the news until Dick Grayson returned. He had recently left the Titans and he left Red Robin in charge so he returned to tell his old friends what had happened. He explained that the Joker set off the bomb and then Superman killed the Joker. This news sent tears down Superboy's face as the hero that he was aspiring to be had just crossed the line. 
Superboy left. Starfire then asked Dick Grayson to return as the leader of the Titans, but he explained that he was needed at Batman's side for this, and he'll keep her posted. Then he simply asked her to keep the Titans out of anything that Superman was going to do. Superboy went to the Fortress of Solitude where Superman was grieving, and he asked him why he did it. He understands grief. He lost his own family in Bart and Gar, but why did Superman have to kill over it? He asks, how could he wear the S on his chest if Superman was willing to kill, and he leaves Superman there? Then at the funeral, Superman announced that there would be a worldwide ceasefire, and things started down the path that would show up for the rest of the Injustice series while Superboy watched on. Then at dinner that night, Mon Pa Kent told Superboy that he would need to learn how to forgive Clark. Clark isn't perfect, and Superboy told them that he couldn't as he flew off into the night. The Titans saw his grief, and they knew that he would do something that he would regret, so they sent Wonder Girl after him. She found him in the Fortress of Solitude, digging around Superman's things, and even though she told them that they should go, it was too late. Superman had arrived. Superman returned holding the Phantom Zone projector, which makes a portal to the Phantom Zone, asking Superboy if this is what he was looking for. He knew that Connor was going to try and send him into the Phantom Zone to try and stop all of this. So Superboy launched straight away, shoving Superman into a wall as he tried to wind up to punch him. But Superman easily slapped him away. Then with a single breath, he threw Wonder Girl aside, only to have Starfire burn him on his back. Everyone jumped into battle against the Man of Steel, but regardless of their efforts, Superman outmatched them at every turn. Tim ran over to try and move the Phantom Zone portal generator, but once he realized that he couldn't move it, Superman asked him, what's the plan here? Batman always has a plan. But while he was talking to Tim, Superboy jumped up from behind, so Superman turned around, cracking Superboy's sternum. Superboy hit the ground, spitting up blood, and Superman informed the Titans that Superboy was going to die. His sternum was cracked, and a ribbon punctured his heart. The only way that they could save him was if they brought him to the Phantom Zone, because if he went there, he would no longer be tied to his physical body. But Superman would only allow them to do that if all of the Titans went. He didn't want to hurt them, and he didn't want them messing up his plans. Once he's done with everything, he'll free them. Without any other option in front of them, the Titans had to take the offer, and they entered the Phantom Zone, where they were locked away until Superman wins. I'm alive. Those two words came across the radio, heard by the world. The Justice League got the message, and they take off to the remnants of Metropolis, destroyed by a twisted and deranged madman. After digging around the rubble, Superman and the Justice League find a hidden bunker in which Lex Luthor has survived the blast. One of Superman's friends in this world. They take off for the Watchtower and they explain to Lex what has happened and why he needed to hide in that bunker. The Joker has set off a nuclear weapon in Metropolis and murdered Lois Lane, Superman's only connection to his humanity. He has gone on a rampage with the Justice League since then, wanting to ensure that no one would ever be harmed in the world again. But has he gone too far? Batman thinks so, as he is now taking a stand against Superman following the death of Nightwing at the hands of Damian Wayne and a mistake that will haunt the Bat family forever. Superman's mission presses forward with battles all over, but certain ones cause the Justice League members to question if what they are doing is the right thing. Like when Black Adam was just defending his country. Superman, Wonder Woman, and Shazam subdued him and forced him to say the magical words granting him his powers. This forced him to turn back into a mortal man, something that he hasn't been in centuries, and he ages rapidly, and the change had a chance to kill him. So Shazam didn't think that it would be best for them to do it for fear that the rapid aging would kill the elderly man. Superman and Wonder Woman didn't care, and they forced him to change back and age. They then kept him from saying the magical words of power once again. He didn't die, but Shazam does wonder. Is it right to possibly kill someone for your goal? But Shazam's just a child, isn't he? What does he know about what's right? Another time, Wonder Woman takes to a war-torn country where the women are tortured by an evil ruler. She arrives, lassos up the ruler, and kills him right there in front of everyone. She then turns to the soldiers and takes their rifles and hands them to the women to protect themselves. But is it right to put the rifles in the hands of those that were tortured for so long? Wonder Woman thinks she knows the answer. Batman comes up with a plan to check on Superman's actions, and he has his team kidnap Hawkgirl so that he can replace her with a sleeper agent. The situation is about to get much worse, though, as across the galaxy, other individuals can see the changing of the tides with Superman and the Justice League. Kalibek, one of Darkseid's followers, reports that Superman appears to have gone soft because he's calling an end to all of the fighting. So Darkseid sends his troops with Kalibek at the helm. If the Kryptonian has softened, then that is his mistake. 
Superman decides to hold a press conference based upon what Lex is telling him. That he needs to tell the world what he is doing, because they only see Superman flying in and stopping warlords and thugs, and they are afraid. They don't know what his plans are. So Superman puts on a suit, and he stands in front of the world to let them know. He just wants the world to be safe. When suddenly, BOOM! A boom tube opens up onto the world and out steps Kalibek and his army, the Parademons. They blast Superman and he lands right in front of Kalibek. What's wrong, Superman? Defeated so easily? Kalibek chuckles to himself. And then he realizes his mistake as Superman gets up. His eyes say it all. There is no truth. There is no justice. There is no mercy. And he hits Kalibek so hard that he launches him into the atmosphere. The Justice League begins to get reports from all over the planet as the Parademons are boom tombing into the heavily populated cities of the world, and they move quickly to try and save as many as they can. Even Batman and his people come together to battle against the demons assaulting Gotham. Their little battle against each other needs to be placed on hold for the sake of the world. Kalibek gets picked up by Superman and thrown into the ground where he lands on him and he threatens for him to call off the attack. But Kalibek sees his chance. You really haven't changed, have you, Superman? And he calls in more parademons. Superman finds himself being buried underneath the weight of the parademons and he pushes out everything that he has to roast them all with his heat vision. He then walks towards Kalibek. Stand up and face me. Kalibek sees the hate in Superman's eyes and he tells him, I yield, you win, Kryptonian. But Superman won't have that and he shouts, You don't get to yield, fight me! As he slams Kalibek into the ground. Daddy isn't going to save you this time, Kalibek. Superman tells him as he cracks him across the face again and then he buries him head first into the ground. Elsewhere, the Flash is running as fast as he can to save as many people. But Superman arrives in front of him at light speed. I need to ask you something, Barry. Can't this wait, Superman? I'm trying to save everyone I can. No, this can't wait, Flash. You're the only one that I can talk to about this fast enough for it to matter. Do you see any other way for me to save as many lives as I can without killing all of the parademons in the sky? If you're asking for my permission to kill, I won't give it to you. But do you see any other way to save everyone? No. So Superman takes to space. And he realizes that what he's about to do, the line that he's about to cross, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter that these are parademons. He's about to take thousands of lives. And with that, he goes back to Earth at rocketing speeds and kills every parademon in the sky. As he lands on the stage where he planned to give his speech with particles of destroyed beings in the sky, the world cheers for their savior, Superman. And Batman realizes that what Superman had to do he realizes that there is no coming back from this. Superman has Lex Luthor begin development of a pill that will grant all of his allies his strength. While Batman tries to get his allies to agree with him and be on his side by revealing his identity after Huntress reveals it by mistake. Both sides meet on the battlefield, yet neither wants to fight because they were friends. They both want the same thing, don't they? Superman calls on Flash to have a friendly game of chess with him while he asks him a few questions. He needs his opinions, and the Flash can think very fast. So Superman begins to play the game, and he starts with his opening statement. I want to get rid of all of the guns. Checkmate. If you start with guns, then what? Smoking? Outlaw cigarettes? They kill far more than guns do, Superman. Checkmate. Then we can imprison everyone who speeds in a car. Checkmate. Then we can lock up everyone who leaves a dangerous dog unchained. Checkmate. Then we can kill everyone who doesn't recycle. Checkmate. But while Superman is thinking of the things that the Flash is saying, Ma and Pa Kent are currently being housed in the Fortress of Solitude after they were kidnapped a little while ago. And there with them is Lex Luthor trying to make this special pill. So they ask him to help their son, because Superman is as fallible as everyone else. Later that night, Damien decides to activate the Watchtower's teleportation system to bring himself back to the Batcave, where Alfred finds him. He hasn't returned ever since he accidentally killed Nightwing and he doesn't know what to do. Batman pulls into the cave and he simply asks his son, what are you doing here? Damien takes the hint and he begins to head for the exit, but Alfred turns to Batman. Your guilt-ridden son has just walked into your home seeking redemption and forgiveness. Please, don't be you, sir. So Batman stops him. Wait, I wanna talk. But Damien snaps at him, 
You left me at Arkham! You are wrong and Superman is right. You're just too full of yourself to see it. This isn't about me. Of course it's about you! It's always about you! Your crusade, your pain, your parents who died, your way, your rules, your legacy, your impossible standards! And Alfred places a hand on the boy's shoulder. Please, let your father talk. But Damien has taken one of the strength-renting pills, and he throws Alfred into the nearby Bat computer by mistake. No! Damien says, shocked at what he's done. And Batman sees his oldest friend injured, and he shouts at Damien, You! But Damien has had enough, and he throws Batman into the trophy coin into the cave, causing it to begin to fall. And it would have landed on Alfred, but Hawkgirl arrives suddenly and catches it. Damien runs over to Alfred apologizing. He didn't know how strong he was. But Hawkgirl comes over and takes Damien, and the two of them begin to leave for the watchtower, until Batman tells them to stop. That's when Damien puts it together. Since when did Hawkgirl listen to Batman? and know where the Batcave was, or is even that strong. So Damien lights an incinerary grenade, forcing Martian Manhunter to turn back to normal. He was the sleeper agent that Batman planted, and then Damien runs through the portal leading back to the Watchtower. Damien informs Superman and the Justice League that Martian Manhunter has been disguised as Hawkgirl this whole time, and Batman still has the real Hawkgirl captive. So Superman has decided that Batman has gone too far this time, and he decides to take the one thing away from Batman, that Batman still thinks he has, his secret identity. He takes to the airwaves to announce to the world that Batman has Hawkgirl captive and he will take his anonymity. Batman's true name is, but Batman activates Protocol Icarus and shuts down the Watchtower. With life support off, everyone in the Watchtower begins to panic and they decide that they need to get the Watchtower back to Earth. But Superman tells them, no, we need to figure out a way to get this message out because we can't give Batman time to find another answer. So they use Cyborg's human computer to tap into social media. And they start, hashtag, Batman is Bruce Wayne. The world is now aware of who Batman is, so the Justice League moves quickly to the site where Batman is. And as they land, Superman demands that they give Hawkgirl back. But Batman tells them that he already released her, after Lex and the Watchtower group verify that it's her. Wonder Woman then warns Batman to stop this, or they will respond in force. So. Batman flies away. Well, that was unexpected, Flash says in shock. It's Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern yells, and the flyers all begin to chase him. Martian Manhunter might be fast, but he can't outrun Superman, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern, so he goes invisible, one of his many powers. But Green Lantern pauses and tells his ring to scan for Martian Manhunter, only to be sucker punched by him. He then stands before Superman. Why are you working against me, John? Because of what you've become. I've watched my planet become overrun by a tyrant, and you are doing the same thing. But Wonder Woman has had enough of everyone talking to Superman about this, and she grabs Martian Manhunter by the head. He changes form, wrapping around her, and he goes inside of her body. He then begins to cut off the oxygen to her brain, slowly killing her. There's only one way, Clark, she says to him, and he knows it to be true. So he blasts Wonder Woman with his heat vision at full power. Martian Manhunter might be as powerful as Superman, but his one weakness is fire, and he burns alive, instantly dying. A few other incidents happen involving Lobo, Green Arrow, Harley Quinn, and Canary, but eventually, Batman calls his team to inform them that Superman has finally gone too far. He killed Martian Manhunter, and they only have one chance to stand against beings this powerful. They need the pill that Lex Luthor has made to make normal humans as strong as Superman, and to get that, they're going to need to break into the Fortress of Solitude. So while his team argues how far is too far, they do join him, and Batman, Catwoman, Captain Adam, Green Arrow, and Canary all go into the teleporter and arrive in front of the Fortress of Solitude. But Batman also has the President of the United States launch an attack on Korea to distract Superman, and that's when they make their move. While Catwoman breaks through the locks, Superman lands with a thud in front of the White House. Why would you do this, Mr. President? You know I would just stop you. Unless you're distracting me. And as Batman enters the Fortress of Solitude, he realizes his mistake. Clark was keeping his parents in the fortress. No, if he thinks even for a second that we came for his parents, I don't even want to know what he'll do. And Batman turns around to see Superman with his hand on Captain Adam's neck, holding him to the ground and his eyes burning red. He's furious and he isn't thinking straight. Even his parents ask him to let Adam go and end this. But Adam isn't concerned. 
He isn't a pushover. He has literally 10 nuclear explosions contained in a containment suit, and he punches Superman off of him. The damage to the fortress as Superman went flying through it is massive, and everyone runs to get out of it as the entrance seals itself, but Green Arrow finds himself stuck inside with Superman's parents. While Batman and his group figure out a way that they can get Arrow out of the base, Captain Adam is burying Superman into the ground. Every punch from him is like a mini nuclear explosion, and Superman can't take it. But Wonder Woman takes a swing with her sword at Adam's neck, breaking the containment field in one swing. Adam pauses. Oh, you stupid. I can't hold it any longer, but I guess this is my opportunity. I have my orders, and I'm already dead. So I'm taking you with me. And he grabs Superman and takes off for space, with Wonder Woman following behind yelling out. As the explosion builds in power and energy pours out of Captain Atom, he allows himself to explode with the power of 10 nuclear blasts in space. The explosion is so great that it throws Wonder Woman back to the Earth and destroys every satellite around them. But he failed. Superman survived, and now he's pissed. They tried to kill him. He comes back to the planet to find where Wonder Woman landed, only to find her in a coma. The Flash arrives to pick her up and bring her for medical attention, as Superman returns to the fortress, burning a hole in the ceiling so that he can get inside. Green Arrow sees what's about to happen to him as he's the only member of Batman's group in the fortress of Superman's parents. He knows what he has to do, and he glances at the super pills. Superman burns the stand that the pills are on and tells Green Arrow not to touch them. So, he fires an arrow at Superman. That won't help you, but it'll make me feel better. The arrow bounces off of Superman and ricochets into Pa Kent's shoulder. Superman backhands Arrow, and he throws him through the wall because he hits him so hard. Scrambling on the floor, he tries to remember the longest distance an arrow has ever been fired. And he fires one last one at Superman, over his shoulder and out the hole in the ceiling. Superman then pummels Arrow over and over, blood flying into the air as his parents look in horror at what their son has become, begging him to stop, please. Arrow just closes his eyes, apologizing to the pretty bird, Dinah the Black Canary, prettiest girl in the whole damn world. He then closes his eyes for the last time. As Batman, Catwoman, and Canary all make it to the site of Arrow's last shot arrow, Canary sees his tracker on it, and she walks away slowly. Ollie's not coming back. But on that arrow, he managed to attach one of the super pills. Batman takes the arrow, and he goes to the Batcave to start analyzing the super pill by himself. He only has minutes before Superman will get there, and the only thing distracting Superman right now are both of his parents telling him how far he's gone, and the hologram of Jor-El telling him that he will receive no more help from the fortress, as he is killed. As Superman takes off of the Batcave, Jor-El turns to Superman's human parents. I'm sorry. I unleashed this on your world. Superman comes crashing through the Batcave ceiling. I removed all of the crazies from Gotham, but I left the original, and he grabs Batman with anger burning in his eyes. Behind them, the Bat computer is trying to decipher what the super pill is. Is that Ollie's blood that you're covered in? He was the most ethical and compassionate friend that we had. Superman pauses, and he turns. Go on, justify his death. I'll call Black Canary and tell her you did it for the greater good. So Superman throws Batman across the cave. Stop talking! Batman runs to a computer and he presses a button that displays pictures of Clark's wedding to Lois Lane. You swore to honor and protect her, Clark, but you failed to protect her. And honor her? How is this honoring her? I'm doing this for her, Superman shouts. You stopped doing this for her the moment that she died, when you lost your humanity. Batman then drops a sonic device to stun Superman, and he runs to the super pill with the computer at 96%. But Superman grabs him by the arm. No. He picks up Batman, and he holds him over his head. Batman screams, Clark, don't! But it falls on deaf ears as Superman slams Batman's back over his knee, breaking it. As Bruce lays there in agony, Superman begins to walk away. I will not kill you, Bruce, but I can't have you in the way. And Bruce turns to him wasn't trying to fight you, was trying to distract you. Superman turns to the computer and he realizes that it has finished and it uploaded the specs of the super pill somewhere else. What did you do, Bruce? Gave us a fighting chance, Bruce says with a smile. Someone then places their hand on Superman's shoulder, Clark Kent, and there stands Alfred, 
Superman looks in shock as Alfred headbutts him so hard that he forces Superman to bleed. I'm so disappointed in you. No more! No more hurting my family! And Alfred pummels Superman over and over! He then walks over, picks up Batman, and he walks to the teleporter. In the aftermath, Superman called for a conference for the world to see. And he declared that Batman and his allies are now enemies of the Justice League. He intends to gather his forces and expose Batman and all of those that will aid him. Because the last thing Lois got to say to him was, save the world. And he intends to. Thank you for watching today's episode of Comic Story in a Full Story. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this and who your favorite superhero is. And don't forget, you can check out the Comic Story in main channel to get daily videos. You can join us over at Comic Story in Movies, aka Absolutely, the podcast channel, to get our opinions on everything going on in the world of superhero movies, comic books, and video games. Or you can join us over at Manga Story, where we talk about manga. And don't forget to click the link down below to support us further. This hot sauce is a hot sauce that we have created. Kitchen Jalapeno is a flavor that we created which involves infusing whiskey into a hot sauce. No, it's not alcoholic, and yes, it is FDA approved. Anyway, once again, thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll see you next time, right here.